All right, let's look at the graph of a polynomial function and describe some of its key characteristics. So here's a function that we're given, f of x equals negative x to the fourth minus x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2. So we can see this is a fourth degree polynomial. Its lead coefficient is negative 1. Based on things that we've already seen, we should have an idea just visually what its end behavior should be doing. But what we're going to do is graph this using Desmos or some other graphing tool that you have available and then describe some of these key features. So let's go ahead. I've already typed this in, but let me, let me illustrate really quickly how we could do that. I usually just use my keyboard because it's faster for me, but I'll do it using uh, on-screen buttons so you can see. So f of x, or we could just do y equals, of course. And so equals, and now I'll try to use the keypad here, even though, again, normally I just use my computer keyboard. Negative x, and we want an exponent, so we're going to raise that to the fourth. Hit my right arrow just to come back down, minus x cubed. So we can type my exponents, plus 2x squared plus 2. And double check, negative x to the fourth. Okay, I think we've got that. Now, here's our graph. Let me maybe just make it a little bit bigger there. Let's identify some of these key characteristics. Let's just run through these things in order. Domain. So first of all, the domain of all polynomial functions will be all real numbers. So let's just illustrate that. So that will be negative infinity to infinity. All real numbers for the domain. And again, that is true for all polynomial functions. Now for the range, it's going to depend on the function. So let's look at this one. Now we've got a high point up here. And notice both sides, it looks like it's going down. And so this is the highest y value. Let me just click on that so it'll stay on the screen. And it goes down from that. So how would we describe that? Let's do it in interval notation. So the range going uh, from negative infinity, working our way up, because interval notation always smaller to bigger, goes up to, let's just go to one decimal here, 4.8, and that point is included, so we'll do a bracket. So negative infinity up to, or we could also say y is less than or equal to 4.8 if we were using inequalities. Okay, let's describe the y-intercept. Of course, it's right there. That's a nice value for us, 0, 2. Let's record that as a coordinate. So 0, 2 is our y-intercept. How about x-intercepts? Let me clear these other values off. We can see that this particular function crosses the x-axis in two places. Again, they're not nice values. Let's just round to one decimal. So there are two of them. So let's list those out. So we have negative 2.10 is one of our intercepts. And the other one is 1.30 if my pen will cooperate here. So two intercepts and relative maxes. So anywhere that the function turns, we get relative extrema, we describe it. So maxes or mins. In this case, notice we have two relative maxes. Let's list those out. And let's just list them as coordinates. So my first one is at negative 1.4, 4.8. And that 4.8, again, we saw was the highest point. And the other one, again, just going to one decimal here, 0 0.7 is our x value, and 2.4 is that y value. And for relative min, so that's the lowest points that we see. And there's just one of those. Happens to be our 
y-intercept as well. That's just coincidental, certainly don't count on that happening. And so that is 0, 2 is our relative min. There's only one of those, of course. Now for end behavior, we should be comfortable with that. Notice both sides are falling, they're dropping off. And so let's go ahead and write that, use our notation. And notice, even degree, so both sides are doing the same thing. They would either both be rising or both falling. Odd degree, we would have one up, one down. So for end behavior, as x approaches infinity, f of x, right, our output value, our y value, approaches negative infinity. So again, as x's get bigger, the y is going to negative infinity. Very similar as x approaches negative infinity. So as we go the other way on our number line, f of x approaches negative infinity as well. We can see that. So I hope that helps. For this course, we're going to focus for now graphing. Use a tool like Desmos. Graph. And then we want to make sure we can identify and describe these key fe features of our polynomial functions.